My name is Melvin Isaac. I'm a professional artist and a community producer for Brick Medium and Brooklyn, New York. The picture that you're looking at is a drawing of myself. At the present, I am at the Fulton Art Fair on Fulton, Brooklyn, New York. This art fair is the 58th annual year. I'm a new member of this art fair and I'm very excited and very pleased to be with them. Initially, I came from the uh, Dorsey Art Gallery where I just became a member of that as well. And uh, this is through uh, Larry Weeks who invited me because uh, he's seen some of my work and thought that that would be a great community for me to uh, participate in. And I'm very happy that I have did that. So they invited me or became a member of the Fulton Art Fair. And so far this is the second week. Today is June the 18th. And so I brought some of my work out here so this way the public could see it. And uh, who knows what might happen after that. So I'm very eager and excited to be here and to share my uh, art with the public and whoever's watching this. As a community producer for Brick, I have my show which is entitled The Artistic Talent and it's aired every Thursday twice, one at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. So it's on Cable Vision 68 and also on Verizon 50, 42, 43, and 44. So at this time, I want to show you some other stuff from my work, what I did, and explain to you what the titles is and what it is behind it. So the next one you're going to be looking at is Biggie Smalls and Tupac. I did this in 2008. This is after uh, both of them had passed on. And I kept it for a while because it showed a lot of a lot of good feeling behind their their rap because they was the uh, rap icon in the rap community or the rap industry. No one have ever uh, expressed themselves the way they did. And it continue on, even after they, uh, their death. They are very young, but they grab everyone's attention through their songs and their lyrics and their raps, especially Biggie and Tupac. Now, the next one is a painting that I had did uh, it's probably about the same year, 2008. And I probably got to do another one similar to that because at that time I put my face in a painting of the king because I felt that, you know, each, each one of us uh, is a king in their own right. And especially if they know their history. So wherever you walk at, how you feel, you express yourself uh, to the highest as a king. So everywhere I go, I'd always bring this painting with me. And uh, this is the way I express myself. Now, the next one is a very, very good, let me move this down. Okay. 
Okay, this is a very good abstract painting, and the name of it is called African Ridgely. As you can see, the vibrant colors, uh, strong, vibrant colors that that captivate your attention. And the reason why I did this because of the, uh, I guess I would say, how, how I seen it, because there's a man and a woman, and what they doing is looking over their children, looking over their community, looking over their village, uh, protecting it, and that's what family do. So I. I really, you know, uh, felt that I had to do this picture. So basically that's what I did. Uh, and most of my art, especially in the abstract, is following the old masters. Uh, and basically that's what I like to do. A lot of African artifacts. Uh, some of them you can name, some of them that I used to uh, no, uh, well, this particular one right here, uh, let me go through the, the old masters. The old master that I, I follow is like Rembrandt, Pablo Picasso, uh, Leon da Vinci, Norman Rockwell, uh, you know, names of that status. So, it just gives me a great pleasure to do painting like this. So, the next one would be this one right here is uh, the Crucifixion of Christ. And I did this, as you can see, uh, there's different nationalities of Christ in there. I just took off the head. And basically what that's telling anyone is uh, whatever culture, however you believe, Christ is in you, whether you're black, white, Spanish, Indian, Mexican, this is the way you see Christ. And that's why I did that. It stirs up a lot of controversy because people are trying to understand it. But basically, if you are comfortable with who you are, because if you go in your house and you are a Christian and you believe in Christ, basically, you have if you if you are a Caucasian, you're going to have a picture of a white a Caucasian uh, Jesus Christ, and if you are black, it's going to be a black Jesus Christ. This way you see it. And if you are Hispanic or Mexican, so this is what I'm sharing with the public. Uh, so that's way you understand why I did this picture. So it's a great picture, very con very good, uh, and it draws a lot of controversy. So the last one, I'm gonna show you that, it is down below, and this is one of the African artifacts from Eric Edwards which he goes to Nigeria, he goes to Africa, and he just does a lot of, uh, he gets a lot of uh, artifacts from Africa. So, I uh, videotaped him and uh, put him on air and he loved it. So I asked him, well, it'd be possible for me to take any picture of your artifact, and he said, of course. So this is one of them. And the history behind this, or the story, is that this is the uh, uh, Bioli people from the Ivory Coast, and this is coming from Nigeria, and this is uh, the uh, expressing the triangle trade market. A lot of history behind this, uh, and the stuff that you see there is that it's showing you royalty. Uh, very valuable and it was kingdom that we had at one point in life. So it let you know that yes we are a royal people. Uh, we came from a royal uh, kingdom 
and uh, this is what's going on. And the other thing that you can look at because of this is that uh, we had we had uh, continued to grow, although we went through or have been uh, enslaved from Africa uh, through the uh, slave ship and the uh, auction and the cotton field and then the Underground Railroad, uh, the Immaculation Proclamation. So uh, we went through so much, but our strength and our uh, vision is always the same because as you see that uh, we became, Obama became president twice of the, the greatest country in the United States. So that tells you that we, we still have that type of endurance or strength within us. So we just become, you know, who we really are. So that's what I want to share with the public. So what I'm going to do now is just appear before the camera. This way you can see me. Okay, so now... Uh, I'm the artist that was speaking to you uh, just a few minutes ago. So, like I said, this is my second week here at the Fulton Art Fair, and uh, I'm very excited, and I'm pretty sure everything is going to be going right, because they're supposed to be having some people come down here just to look at everybody work, and I guess see who's the best of this, and this is good for me as well because uh, I haven't been exposed for a while. But it still will be going uh, pretty good. So with this thing right here, with this thought, I uh, appreciate everybody listening to me. And I hope you continue on enjoying my art. Uh, and also for the future, you're going to see a lot of my art and me expressing myself. And I'm also going to show that link that I did with Weeksville. That was about a month ago. And this is through Brick. So it was, uh, they was interviewing me about my art and I was expressing everything I know about my art. So I'm very happy and hopefully that once I get that link, I can put them on my show. So again, thank you very much for listening to me and let me get to with the other artists that I haven't filmed yet. Hey guys, my name is Gloria Braxton. I'm here out at the Fulton Street Art Fair and I'm here to discuss myself and what I do. I am a watercolor artist. I focus on portraits. I love portraits. I love recreating people. That's my thing. I do it well. Details are a blessing to me. I do it and, you know, nine times out of ten, it's the joy that keeps me pushing. And then the other one tenth is actually the people and the love from the people. So that's what we're doing out here. We're out here so that the people get a chance to see my artwork. They get a chance to know me and understand what I'm giving as an artist. So today that's what we're doing and that's what we're discussing and we're discussing my artwork. And I have four pieces for you guys and I want you to really dive into it. Come on this journey with me. <laughs> the first one we're discussing is contemplation. Extremely important to me. This painting is a painting of my mom, but more importantly, this painting is to convey what mothers try to teach their sons every day. They try to sit them down, they try to have those conversations, and not often is it st still in time. So this is a still in time of that conversation between a mother and a son. She's contemplating, so I wanted to grasp that and the details in the painting, how her hand is wrapped, the clothing, you know, I wanted you to get a feel. I wanted you to relate to her. So that's what this one is about. The next one we're going to go over is relaxation. This is extremely important to me. This is my number one requested type of painting to do because of the femininity and the pose and the wine glass and the way her hair is. She exudes confidence. And that's what I wanted to show. So when people see this, they want it. 
the wives want it. The husbands want it for the wives. They, they have it displayed in their living room, in their bedroom. This is how we like to see women, that subtle, sexy. So that's what I wanted to give off. The next one, the next one is worker girl. This one focuses on child labor, but at the same time, it shows the beauty and how she takes care of herself, the details and how she feels about her life. I wanted to show expression, emotion. I wanted you to feel for her. You know, her, her clothes isn't expensive, but she has this beautiful scarf and she takes pride in it. Look at the way that it's wrapped. Look at her face. You know, I wanted you to feel from all of these pieces, but especially this one, Worker Girl. The next one. The next one is Conscious. For so many reasons, this is Conscious. The Kente scarf, the natural hair, the way that she has a certain confidence and will in her to be original and different. I love this one. You know, she's unapologetically black and that's what I wanted to show. You know, especially the features in the nose and you know, the earrings to match the scarf. She loves herself. And I like to create art in which we can relate and we can show love and self-confidence. Each of these are important pieces to me and I'm happy that we're out here displaying it. It gives everyone a chance to feel and understand who I am as an artist. So I'm so excited you guys went on this journey with me. Again, I'm excited to be out here for Fulton Street Art Fair. Thank you so much. And you can find me wherever you need to find me. I'm on Facebook, Gloria Braxton on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. If you want to see progress shots of my paintings or videos of my paintings, I post them. I like to share. I want people to go on the journey with me to follow my work. My Instagram is glorybart underscore -G -G life. G-E-E-G-E-E. -E -E. So if you guys follow me, that'll be awesome. I hope to hear from you soon. Hello, my name is Sharnika Wright. I'm 25 years old, born in Harlem Hospital and raised in Brooklyn Flatbush. So I love to draw, paint. Pretty much being an artist is in my DNA. And um, I like to do mix, paint, mixed media, um, draw, or you paint a lot of materials. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've been drawing since I was three, so I didn't stop since then. Um, drawing is like, no, actually painting is more meditation for me. And I love to do beadwork and I'm very outgoing. Um, I'm actually a brown belt in Shotokan Jiu Jitsu. And um, I'm actually working on a few matches and I just love to work out and draw and use all my strong quality qualities and you know like to show others. <laughs> this one I done in 2013 so it's actually a port no actually a live drawing of my brother so I remember I was going to LaGuardia Community College and so my teacher, she wanted me to, so pretty much he sat for nine hours and I painted him. So this is acrylic and um, pretty much we had a good time. We had a, I had a good time and um, when I took it to class the next day, everyone loved it. And um, I was able to get my A minus because I was supposed to fail that class. So this is my brother Willie. He, he, I love this kid. <laughs> this is my Frida. So pretty much I network every Tuesday. And um, the theme was Frida, an uh, artist from Mexico. And um, I drew it from a DVD, but I turned it into my own. And um, actually it was supposed to be yellow, but someone had gold. So I, my friend made me borrow his gold paint and I added the green, cause I love green, of course, on the eyelashes. And it was just symbols of, you know, my birthday, 1991 and I love to meditate in the day I was born. So that's why I love this 
one and then a little bit of rhinestones on it i didn't want to overdo it yes so this little girl right here <laughs> was in pencil so it's, I, I did it in pencil i still have the picture of it i actually sold it hand sold it in so this is hair hair marker and watercolor for that one and even though it was tiny it actually took a lot of work to <laughs> make sure it lines up so i call this the bumblebee i'm still thinking about a name for it so i definitely have a story from last week when i was here so i was hanging up this work and within like one minute a big queen size bee showed up next to my artwork so I was trying not to panic. It was so cool, but it was like the bee matched my work and everything. So it, it was a good experience seeing, you know, a bug, <laughs> a bee come to my work. But um, this one is with the yellow hair and um, the meditation, um, because I'm still trying to work on the meditation part, even though sometimes my siblings say I drive them crazy with it and the rhinestone eyes and then the necklace oh yeah and the sticker lips these are sticker lips like i i, was, I love stickers <laughs> i love stickers and i add them to my artwork and make them as collage collages so this one so this one is still in work in progress i definitely want to make her bigger so this one was the pink hair. The pink hair actually drove me crazy because it just, it took so long. And um, I did the beaded necklace, white and blue. And um, I wanted her to be, you know, dark, like rich. So I didn't get into details with it, but when it came to the collage, of course, I definitely, you know, went detail with it. So this one is, um, Oil, oil pastels. I use oil pastels for this one. And um, so this one, surprisingly, I did a couple of months ago. So this was supposed to be, this is supposed to be Muhammad Ali. So um, I actually did it, on, I actually painted it on a Tuesday night. And I actually had a good time painting it. It was a, a little bit difficult, but um, I had a good time. I met a lot of people when I went to Delansky's um, in Soho where they had, like I said, the theme of what to draw for the night. So I've done that, but I, I love this. I'm gonna do another one like this, you know, cause I, I love to fight anyway. So I hand beaded all this beads and this took me like two months. So it took me longer than I expected. Actually, I wanted the whole gate to be beaded, but um, this was good enough. And I it's supposed to be orange. So I ran out of orange and I add, you know, the clear and the yellow, which wasn't bad. And I, I love, this is one of my biggest pieces that I did so far. And um, I love to be, cause it's, it's meditation for me. And I've been working on this like in the middle of the nighttime. Like usually like around 8, 8, 8 p.m. all the way to like 3 in the morning, sometimes 4 in the morning for two months. And um, I just love to bead. So you'll definitely see a lot of more bead work for me. I wanted to keep it simple because trying to do all the other pictures and drawings is like science and math within itself to make sure everything is laid out. So this is hand beaded every bead <laughs> and um i love it and it feels really nice too it feels really nice too so um this is definitely like an ancestor's trait for me yes so um this one is amy winehouse i did at delansky and soho a couple of months ago on tuesday night so i actually did two of them but this one was finished and I actually had a good time. Surprisingly, I did this in the dark because the light was not that, you know, bright. But I had a good time. And um, this is the oil pastel. And this is the, um, the paint. 
and you know people take pictures and stuff like that so I had to kind of throw my name in the middle <laughs> and you know the green eyes I love different color eyes not on me but on my artwork so this one I called Maryland because I was working on this piece when um when one of my cousins passed away like she she had a stroke so I was like let me call it Maryland and um I actually this is like the fourth drawing or fifth drawing that I did the first one I won an award for in high school and um, it was very exciting and this one she has like the purple bees the real eyelashes I did this one in color and pencil color and pencil watercolor and um, I'm still not finished with the background but the background is gonna be glitter so what <laughs> so and then I bought some little some I was about to call them barrettes they're buttons <laughs> the buttons so I was like maybe add the buttons on so I love this piece I did this piece like four times and every time the picture looks different and the other one I sold so I'm happy about that and the other one I sold two of them so this one is Maryland the other one that I sold was Serenity and um the other one that I did I didn't have a name for it yet so this is my lady Marilyn. I call her the Matrix for right now. So um, this one I did last year and I did the moon because that, that time the moon was like half full. Actually it was more than half full in the stars because I like studying the stars at night time. And um, I wanted to make a design and a pattern with the hair because I, I do the hair straight all the time. I wanted to create a design so I did more of a checker box look. And um, so this one is hair, paint, pencils, rhinestones, and um, a few black rhinestones right here. I had a bunch of them but one of my friends, Tina, I gave her my rhinestones to borrow and then she drops them all over the floor and I couldn't get mad but um even though <laughs> this work looked nice her head supposed to be more rhinestone than black but that's the story of my friend dropping all my little tiny black rhinestone and I couldn't even get mad so this one I did a couple of months ago so I started off with this she looked totally different and um but people told me my artwork starts to look like certain people and I realized it do look like certain people I know or certain people I may meet in the future which is cool and I, I did the I braided the blue hair and I love this blue I love the blue and um the yellow so this one is in watercolor and pencil and my little buttons I add on and I wanted to make it plain but it was still you know design wise and she got blue makeup and the rhinestones so I definitely love my um rhinestone beads and <laughs> accessories so this one I call the spider lady um, I actually have a second piece to it but it came out totally different I did not like this piece at first I kind of had to switch it off and be bold with it because I wanted to capture you know the design of her hair and um, surprisingly I displayed it at Tobacco Road a couple of months ago and a lot of people love this and I'm gonna create more styles like this and um, this one I definitely had a hand sewn so it was it was work but it, I definitely stabbed myself a couple of times trying to you know make her pretty with the hair design so this is my ruby lady and I drew it in pencil this work looked totally different from the way how I drew it so I added the ruby eyes so I got the ruby eyes from the Labor Day parade I was like maybe add red rubies to her eyes to be more captivated and make her more mysterious and this was the the moon that night it was a caressing moon and um, I love looking at the moon and the stars so I always try to reflect that in my artwork 
and um, this one is like cards, like a card game. So this is actually party stuff that I actually glued on and I loved it. And um, the red and black beads and yes, the sticker lips. I love the sticker lips like I told you. So I put the sticker lips on her and I was in love. Cause I didn't like how her lips look so I added like the sticker lips. So this one is most, one of my favorite pieces. I'm definitely gonna do a bigger piece. This one is a self-portrait that I did um, seven years ago at Art and Design High School. And um, I, I won an award for this. I don't remember which award it was, but it's a, uh, it was pretty cool. So my teacher, he turned the picture black and white. And I had the star earrings and I was supposed to enter this contest like two years ago. So every year they had the same contest. And finally I entered and um, I, I won for this piece. So I was so happy and um, I was so happy. So this is definitely one of the self portraits that I did. It's from um, the scratch board. So I wanna do more of the scratch boards. I didn't get back into it, but this is one of them and it was so cool. I'm from the Dorsey's Gallery. So I've been a, a student member there for three years now. And um, the way to contact me right now, I'm mostly on like Facebook, Sharnika Wright, S-H-A-R-N-E-K-A, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-C. And my email address is nikadwright at yahoo.com. So N-E-K-A-D-W-R-I-G-H-C at yahoo.com. And um, hopefully you see me again. No, you will see me again even <laughs> so yes so, so thank you <laughs> my name is Gregory Duggins I'm an abstract expressionist I like vibrant colors design I try to move it around so when you look at one of my paintings you can get a lot of different imagery from it so I look forward to that that kind of thrives me so it depends on certain music that I might be playing, or I try to look at different imagery, and that's how I usually end up coming up with a lot of my designs. So where can they reach you at? Where do you, uh... Right now, you can reach me through my email, which is gregorydog at g, gmail.com. All right, so that's G-R-E-G-D-U-G -G at gmail.com. Like I said, overall, the pieces I want, which when you look at it, is a certain imagery. So there's no right or wrong on how to hang it, you know, because you might see something where you flip it around or move it to the right, rectangular, or on an angle. That's how I try to design it. So mainly, like I said, it's more where's the design. That's what I love about abstract, that you can go you can go as far as you want and come back. Like with this one, I done heard a couple of people say they get a cosmic feeling from it. With I was just thinking about swirls and then with the dots in it, it gives off uh, like you're in the stratosphere. You know, so you know, a little galaxy. So those are some of the things that, you know, I try to convey in the painting. So back to what I love to do which is show design. That's basically my background. So usually, like I said, when you look at it, you should see some kind of imagery. So I want it to flow and kind of be like diverse in its own way. And the same thing with this here. It's just mainly where it's a continuous flow. So like I said, there's no right or wrong way to hang it or, you know, look at it. So hopefully, each person that looks at the design gets something out of it, you know? And um, once that happens, then I feel like I accomplished my goal. If you see something or tell me something different about the painting, then I'm happy. You know, I felt that I accomplished my goal. Name is Gregory Duggins. I can be reached at, with my email, like I said before, gregdug at gmail.com 
That's G-R-E-G-D-U-G at gmail.com. All right? If you're looking for something that's a little different, where it's diverse, you can see some movement, then this is what I present. Hello, my name is Wilma Olivia Ward, and I'm a collagist here in New York City at the Fulton Art Fair, exhibiting my art which it speaks for itself, as I can say. This one right here is called Break These Chains. As ancestors that walked before us broke those chains for us black people for our freedom of speech, arts, and whatever you endure in life to break these chains. And the inspiration came when I seen chains and they're leaping out of the change to go forward. We're not here to go backwards. We're here to thrust into the future. And this is what it is. This one here that I present is Tears Rock. Tears Rock came to me as an inspiration that we all cry in different forms and different fashions. And the inspiration came is which is another chain a bolt chain in the eyes that what we see we're not chained down also so these two are linked together that tears rock but you can surpass your tears this one is a bed of thorns and sometimes thorns in life hit you at certain times and the name of this piece is house of whatever you would like to call it or it represents in your life Things are going on in your life that you don't know about, and you're on a bed of thorns. But you can rise up above the bed of thorns also. So I represent this one as House of. And my email address is www.wow0420 at yahoo.com. And that's where I can be reached. My phone number is 347-405-7375, and I can be reached at that number. And I thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Fulton Art Fair. My name is Izell Glover. I'm the artist, educator, and equestrian. Equestrian, which represents the, uh, uh, the precise handing of the horse, the equine. I have uh, grew up with this Fulton Art Fair for about 50 years. I started when I was about 14 years old. Had a great and wonderful time, which I'm truly pleased and proud to be uh, one of the um, mentees to some of the great artists of this foundation here. Uh, the Fulton Art Fair basically gave me so much of a cultural experience that uh, I find it's, uh, it was a tradition that carries from uh, Ernie Critchlow, Tom Feelings, uh, Jacob Lawrence, whom we're showcasing for this year. And um, I've had a chance to learn from them what it means to, uh, to become the custodians of the African American culture. I am truly pleased and proud to present this year the, the works of the late Jacob Lawrence. This year, the Fulton Art Fair, we're gonna feature um, Jacob Lawrence. As in previous years, we had uh, Tom Feelings. Uh, we're gonna have Ernie Critchlow for the next year also. But this year, the the artistry of the style, the medium, and the concept of Jacob Lawrence, whom inspires so many black and white artists around the world, not just in this country. But as you look at some of the uh, uh, the, the, the styles in Jacob Lawrence's work, also uh, captured by his mentee or someone to study underneath him, which is Otto Neal. And Otto Neal captured these pieces, such as one, two, and three. Here you see the color and composition, which is also introduced by uh, Pablo Picasso, uh, Matisse, Renoir, and so forth. But here, how you do a composition of colors, colors and composition to give you that composition of the artwork. Here, the flow of the birds, a rhythm as you look at it. You take colors into perspective as you begin to understand how this man of Jacob Lawrence would capture the essence of the black female here.
Okay, the next one basically in praise and worship, you find it that uh, Jacob gave you simplicity of lines and form, the simplicity of his dark colors compared to a semi-dark and to a lighter colors also, and showing the praise and the worship of a divine order, the praise and worship of the uh, divine order. Now, if you pick it with the uh, your sun at the sun or the moon, you, that rocket lays in the ocean or the pond where it reflects that light from here to here. And also to give you a little bit of contrast, and think of it, if you did not place that little silhouette of a bird there, it wouldn't have that much of meaning to it. And as you black that out, you see what I mean. So here, it's the color and composition of a master, such as Al O'Neill, portraying the work of the late Jacob Lawrence. The next piece, the next piece basically the uh, motherhood. In other words, how Otto captured from Jacob Lawrence the composition and the colors and cubism of the style, the medium, the style of the art is here, cubism, the medium, which is basically oil and canvas, the composition, which shows you the composition of those colors that you can put together. And uh, only the artist can truly make a picture of an ideal or a dream. So when you do that and look at not just these works, but works of other great black artists, you could be, you could compliment yourself and uh, basically get a learning lesson of the culture of the people. Okay, the next will be uh, a series of my works, starting with some pen and inks, such as the, uh, the ones at the bottom here. Here, this one here, basically, it's called Whispers. Whispers, I gathered with my, uh, my sister, uh, who basically was my mentor in growing up here in bed -Stuy. Whispers basically shows you three beautiful young, young girls of different hues and colors. And here, this the backyard of bed -Stuy, showing you that little gossiping scene where those girls would have their chance to, to communicate with each other and color and composition there. Well, in, in essence of who they are, the graphics work. The next, basically, I've taken the, the writings of Lewis Allen to give you a song that was sung by the late Billie Holiday also. It's called uh, uh, Strange Fruit. And here, this is the, uh, the lyrics in three paragraphs, one, two, and three, to give you that lynching scene of that black man, basically, whom struggled and died and was lynched for like so many millions of men have been lynched and died in this country out of white supremacy and racism. The next basic simplicity is the uh, another pen and ink of uh, it's called doing a number. It's, it's the, the the title is doing a number. Now you can take that in both ways. He's either doing a number, such as a dance number, such as a vaudeville, or he's the number man and doing the number. If you take a a, a look at history, he didn't have that much education, but he mastered how he could take numbers without pen or paper. You just go and give him a number. I remember my family would just yell out the window, give him a number, and he would give him as many 20 or 30 numbers. He would remember all of them. And this is called doing the number. The barber scene showing you how that institution that we have as African Americans in this country. The next is the historical scene. This is uh, basically, I attribute, attribute this to the uh, uh, my grandfather. It's called third generation. Now you're looking at one and three when it comes to third generation. The grandson, the grandfather. The second are his parents is being lynched and out of the window. You look through that window to capture a scene, horrific scene of their father being lynched for no reason at all. You can think of any one of the millions of reasons why he was oppressed by racism and white supremacy. Okay, so here, this is called third generation and that dialogue between grandfather and grandson which I'm proud to say uh, a week ago I just became a grandfather for the first time in my life also. The next is a tribute to my cousin who died in the World Trade Center. This building, I think it's building number one and the background scene here. I did this after I watched those buildings fall. I watched the buildings fall and it's called Still I Rise. Uh, young cousin of mine that was basically so vibrant with color and creativity and so much youth in her heart, mind, body, and soul, but yet she perished in the World Trade Center. Still I rise. And then my most historical scenes, which I'm pleased to conclude this exhibit with for this year, and it's just a, uh, maybe 2% of a series on the Black West. The Black West opens with, uh, say, the Buffalo Hunt. The Buffalo Hunt 
is uh, historically some of the great black cowboys, such as Jim Taylor. Jim Taylor from 1868 was considered one of the greatest lawmen of, out of Boley, Oklahoma in 1868. Next to Jim Taylor, you find is Nat Lowe. I researched the books that have a bibliography of uh, fantastic, about 36 books that basically begin to rescue and reconstruct the history of the African American in this country. And you'll understand where the syllable cowboy came from. C-O-W-B-O-Y, cowboy, syllable, the word cowboy came out of the slave plantation back during the 16th, 16th century. During that 16th century, you find there are young boys between eight and 15 years old that were basically slaves that became masters of the mass of the uh, uh, the slave master's cattle. So each morning about five o'clock, he would come out, wake the boys up and have them, he had about eight or nine of them. They didn't ride horses at the time. They steered or uh, herded cattle on foot. And he would wake them up in the morning and say, okay, fine, you boys, you Negroes, get up. I want you to take my steers from the west pasture to the east pasture so they can graze. And he would tell them, now remember, and one of my steers run off and get hurt. I'll whip your hide till you get bliss as big as your feet, and I'll whip some more until the bliss is bust. Those boys became some of the greatest rodeo stars, lawmen, uh, uh, pioneers in the history of America. Our foundation begins on these men and women of the Black West. Okay, there are also some great and wonderful women, such as Mary Stagecoach Fields, Biddy Mason, Mary Ellen Pleasant, who became legends of the West. The top two are part of the book that I'm working on. This one here, the first one you see here, it's called Stampede. And here I have a book. I'm not gonna put too much entire on there because I'm still working on it. But these are some of the illustrations that'll represent the dedication and commitment to, uh, to rescue and reconstruct the history and also preserving a wonderful culture and the artistry of black men. Here, men that can ride such beautiful horses and wonderful ways such as how to show you how to stop a stampede by bumping the herd in the front. You turn that head steer, you always have the best riding cowboy out front. He would turn the steers into a circle where they would wind down and calm them down after a period of time. After that, doing that same scene, you find some of the steers at the beginning would break off. And you find here, these are two young cowboys, young black cowboys, where one falls down, his horse breaks a leg by falling. And the idea of knowing that this is my brother or my friend, and he's gonna try to save him. Now, I leave it to my viewers. Will he save his friend by grabbing the back of his coat and pulling him from underneath that horse? The horse has his leg pinned down, but somehow, hopefully he'll save his friend and uh, they'll conclude to a final uh, chapter in the book where uh, the, the, the young cowboys, they make it. Okay, so like so many, uh, African American made tribute to this country, but yet to be recognized. So I'm just going to just conclude that just by saying, as artists in today's world, we are to, uh, to, to begin to dedicate ourselves to rescuing and reconstructing our history so that we can have uh, that kind of understanding of who we are as a people. And as a people that we can be proud of, even white Americans can be proud of us also because the black men in law and order such as Bass Reeves, Ike Rogers, Lily Factor, Zeke Mills, that's just law and order. But then you have rodeo, you have pioneers. There's so much of a history that's yet to be constructed for us. So you young artists, I want you to take up those books, put those pieces together. You can give me a call at my number such as Izel Glover, 917-282-9577 or my email which is iglover, that's I-Z-E-L-L dot G-L-O-V-E-R at M-E dot com. Izell Glover, artist, educator, and a real cowboy. Thank you.